My 3D printer has been incredibly useful when it comes to restoring vintage electronics. It's really nice to be able to whip up repair parts and upgrades on demand. But this time, I'm going to reward it with its own upgrade. I bought my Prusa Mini not long after it launched in late 2019, and since then it's been a fantastic tool. Normally when I need to print something, I'll copy the file to a USB flash drive and drop it in the printer. This is easy enough, but if I need to quickly iterate through revisions to a design, it can get a bit tedious. There's an Ethernet port I could use to connect it to my network instead, but like a lot of others, I don't have a place to set up my printer permanently. It would be nice if there was a wireless option. And thankfully, there is. I picked up a Wi-Fi module based on the ESP01 chipset and spent a couple minutes, almost literally, installing it in my Mini, though the process is similar for the Mark IV. First, I got into the menu and moved the Z-axis up in order to make more room for the next step. Then I used a hex bit to remove the single screw that secures the cable clamp on top of the control box. With that out, I could move the cables out of the way and remove the box's cover. The header the Wi-Fi module plugs into is underneath the power switch on the side. The switch has a tab on each end that secures it to the enclosure, and I used a spudger to press them in so I could slide the switch out. This is honestly probably the hardest part of the whole installation process. With that done, I could take the new module out of its packaging. Prusa's guide says to disconnect the wiring from the switch, but I found that unnecessary. The module can only fit in one direction, and I was able to just hold the wiring out of the way. With the module fully seated in its header, I could snap the switch back into place. Now's a good time to inspect the other wiring inside the controller box, especially these two harnesses for the hot end and bed heater. If they're loose or damaged, now's the time to take care of them. But otherwise, it just came down to reinstalling the cover, then getting the cable clamp back in place and securing it with its screw. That's it for the hardware, though there's a couple more steps left. If your Mini is running a firmware version older than 4.4, you'll need to update it. This is easy. Just download the file from Prusa's support site, extract it, and copy the appropriate file for your language to a USB flash drive. Stick the drive in the printer and turn it on, and it should upgrade the firmware automatically. Even if you're already running 4.4, you probably want to move to the latest version, as starting with 5.1, the Mini added support for input shaping, which can dramatically improve print speeds. The update just took a minute or so, and when it was done, it detected the new Wi-Fi module and launched the setup wizard. First, it flashed the firmware to the module, then offered to generate the Wi-Fi credential file. This gets saved to the USB flash drive, which it prompts you to remove. Simply open the file on your computer and enter your Wi-Fi network's name and password, then save it. With the flash drive back in the printer, click Continue and it'll import the settings. You can then let it delete the file from the drive since it's no longer needed. And that's pretty much it for setup. If you go into the settings menu and choose network, it'll show the printer's IP address. Then scroll up to the Prusa link menu and select it, and it'll show the username and password. Browse to that IP from your computer and enter the credentials, and you're in the printer's web interface. From here, you can see the status of the printer, browse through the design files on the flash drive, and start a print. And crucially, you can drag and drop files to upload to the printer and print them right away. Taking things a step further is Prusa Connect, which lets you add your printer to Prusa's cloud service so you can monitor it from anywhere. This can be useful for keeping an eye on a long print if you're away from home, but for my purposes, it's not really necessary, so I haven't set it up yet. There's really only two small caveats to this setup. First, the ESP module doesn't have the best antenna, so if your Wi-Fi coverage is poor where you use your printer, it might have trouble connecting. The other thing is that you still need to leave a flash drive connected, since the printer uses it to store your G-code files. But now, you can just keep it attached all the time. The best part of this upgrade is not just how quick and easy it was to do, but also its cost. 
Crucia lists these Wi-Fi modules on its web store for $7 US, and also links to a community-managed spreadsheet where 3D printing enthusiasts have tested various versions, where they bought them, and how well they worked. I'll include links down in the description, including one to where I bought mine. For seven bucks, this upgrade is a no-brainer, especially since it makes an already useful tool even more capable. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Here's another episode you should check out, and as always, thanks for watching.